How's it going guys? The time has come to start putting the RM250 back together. We're going to be dropping in the engine, putting on the wheels, the suspension, swing arm. So it's going to be a banger today. I'd recommend you stop the video right here. Maybe go grab yourselves a drink or make a snack or something and and uh, sit back and enjoy this one. Let's get started. So if you guys have not seen the RM, we've got uh, a lot of stuff coated and back together. The frame, triples, forks, all that's looking good. Wheels are back together with the tires on them. And we've got the shock, which we just finished up, as well as the swing arm. And I believe the engine's around here somewhere. I don't think I've touched the engine in probably over a year, so it's probably got like an inch of dust on it. Yeah, she's uh, a little dusty. It's about time we pulled this baby out. Oh, shoot. She's uh, a little dustier than I thought. I freaking left the intake open. Freaking goon squad. If it blows up, that's probably why. All right, so the reason why the head was just sitting on here, I had actually got a new head for this thing from Fathead, and I did a giveaway with the old one, and I uh, got the new one, just never bolted it on, got busy, got sidetracked. Jeez, I cannot believe I left this thing sitting like that. What an idiot. Dude, look how fresh this thing is looking. Everything is just primo on it. These things from Fathead are just unreal. What did I do with my nuts? Don't you just hate it when you lose your nuts? Where should they go? Here we go. There's a few nuts. Are those prime enough? Got the O-rings. I think we're dialed. First torque should be to 11. All right. Actually, just do one of them. Just do torque one, leave the other ones loose. We're gonna go across from each other. Kind of something like that. All right, second round of torque should be 18. You guys get nervous when you're torque and you're like just waiting for something to snap. I think we're gonna have to grab some sick shots of this thing outside after we get it dusted off. What am I doing, dude? The stand rotates. Have you, I don't know if you guys have seen the stand yet. It's the new one from Nihilo. Frickin' mint. I think we're ready to drop this baby in. Dude, how freaking gnarly is this gonna look? All that aluminum with this gray and the yellow. All right, which way looks easiest to go in? Sick. All right, so I got all my hardware back from Zeke Plate and the stuff is looking pretty sweet. Looks like I got everything. Here's an engine mount bolt. Let's just start popping these in. I like to just put a little thin coat of grease on these bolts. All right, we got engine mounts. I'm gonna go clean these up real quick and I'll probably need to Cerakote this one at steel. And I'm just gonna leave these ones bare aluminum. Look like they're in Decent shape. All right, let's get these things buffed out. I swear every video turns into buffing, but I mean, what can I say? Not looking too bad for a couple of crusty old motor mounts. All 
Gonna get the swing arm ready to go together. Just got a couple plates on the back here. Got ourselves a new chain slider here. So I think my zinc plater lost the other hardware for that slider. So we're just gonna be rocking with one for now and grease up my swing arm bolt. So this is like the number one bolt that gets stuck on a bike. So whatever you do, throw lots of grease on this and grease it often. Swing arm bolt wouldn't go in and uh, we figure I'd test the swing arm. Looks just fine. I thought it was the zinc had been too thick on here, but it was actually just the powder coat on the frame here. So when you guys are powder coating a frame, you wanna keep an eye out for that. Yeah, both sides are tight. We're gonna have to file that powder coat down. Dude, how about every time you use an air tool, you have to go, What's up with that? <laughs> Dialed. So I just thought of something as I was looking at the swing arm. The chain adjuster marks right here are a little gouged out. So I'm gonna have to remake some of these. All right, let's give her another try here. Should go a little smoother. That's how it should be right there. Buttery. Got our linkage. More brushed aluminum. Dude, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of brushed. So we gotta do some more trimming here for the linkage. It's a little too tight with that powder coat, so we're gonna have to grind it down just a little bit. Wait, whoa, whoa. What? You're missing something, dude. What am I missing? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Can't really get in there too well. We're gonna go back to this one. I think we're getting too much work done today. Might have to slow it down. All right, we're calling it done for the night. Gonna have to come back at it tomorrow. Ooh, take a gander at it. Not bad. Morning, dudes. Got some stuff to Cerakote today. Got the pegs, some axle spacers, last motor mount, and axle blocks. The stuff cleaned up and uh, sandblasted. So the pegs actually clean up really nicely. These are just the stock pegs that I smooth all the scrapes out of. And I'm actually gonna sharpen these babies up, get a little more bite out of them, but for stock pegs, they're actually not bad. They're not like super skinny like most are. So I'm just gonna be using an angle grinder on this. Look at the difference here. It's crazy what a few minutes with a grinder will make. 
Should go bear trapping. These things are pretty sharp. All right, next up, we just gotta bead blast them. So we're spraying these parts out in graphite black Cerakote. And I'm sure you guys have seen this a million times, but basically we just mix the color and the catalyst at 12 to 1 ratio, spray it on the parts, let the stuff dry for 15 minutes, and then pop them in the oven for an hour at 300 degrees to cure them. Then to mix them up, I just put a little rubber glove over top of it. Gotta make sure you shake it up real good. I'm gonna use a 110 mesh strainer while I'm pouring this into the cup. All right, boys, we're ready to spray. While that stuff is curing, I thought I'd show you something we got over here got a uh, stack of shirts back from printing these things are pretty sick I mean obviously you guys know I like two strokes and I mean America where else in the world can you uh, chase your dreams and build the life that you want so let's let's throw this thing on oh yeah that's pretty fresh I mean this shirt embodies quite a bit I think so I mean everyone knows two strokes are awesome and America is pretty badass, but I mean, what's been happening over this last year or so has been pretty brutal to watch, honestly. I mean, I'm very proud to be an American, but it's uh, it's pretty shitty to see the situation that's come to uh, the forefront here. And I mean, at the beginning last year, I mean, it was, they said 14 days and now we're going over 400 days and it's, from the beginning, it's been all very questionable. I mean, when uh, when you need a test to show that you have something that is supposedly so infectious and so deadly, and when you have the director of infectious disease sending cash to China where all this stuff started, and when right on the box of masks, it says not effective for viruses. And, and also when you have the government and uh, people in power never given out any wholesome information about real health and building your immune system, eating healthy, exercising, taking the vitamins and supplements that you need to fight something like this. And the uh, list goes on and on. I mean, we could all do our own research and come to our conclusions, but that's pretty much my opinion on it. And I mean, I think it's just a complete abuse of the Constitution and overreach of the government and we're getting close to living under tyranny now it's it sucks and at this point i mean if we don't stand up and do something about it we're gonna lose our freedoms and a lot of our uh, a lot of our constitutional rights so i mean what i think we need to do is we all need to stand up and get used to saying no like when uh someone tells us to put a mask on say no i mean if you want to wear one that's up to you if you want to get the the fauci ouchy that's up to you it's your your choice and when they mandate uh you know the jab jab you can say no if you don't want to get it it's up to you we need to get comfortable saying no and get comfortable being in uncomfortable situations when people are gonna you know confront us about these things and when they try to lock us down again we need to say no I mean, who in the right mind wants to be locked in their home, wear a face diaper, and get jabbed with an experimental drug? Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why, why would anyone want to do that? And uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter who you are, who you voted for. We all need to get together, come together, do something about this, because at the end of the day, we all like freedom, right? That's no matter where you live, whether it's in the US or any other country, we all want freedom. We all want the freedom to uh, 
uh, chase our dreams and follow our passions and do whatever we want in our lives and you know make our lives into what we envision so um, yeah I think we need to learn to start saying no we need to start making a difference locally talking to our local officials school boards legislators uh, representatives governors you know list goes on all those types of people that are enforcing these things upon us at a local level get involved with them tell them what you think and uh, maybe be in a position to make some of those decisions I know I need to be better about that I need to do more locally and try to make a difference on that forefront but yeah I think also we just need to talk to our friends and families and neighbors and discuss what's going on here and I mean you might be surprised a lot of people will agree with you but it's been such a topic that's politicized and I mean it is political but it's so such a touchy subject you know and people don't want to talk about it so like I said we need to get comfortable being uncomfortable just like this is very hard for me to come to you guys and talk about it but I mean it's uh it needs to be talked about and we all need to talk to our our uh, people around us and get on the same page and that's when we can truly make a difference and do something about this so yeah the time is now to do something and so I think we all need to stand up and and uh, put our brave faces on and go do it I mean it's not gonna I don't think it needs to be violent or it needs to involve you know anything like that we can do this peacefully and we can uh, make a difference just with informing ourselves and talking to the right people and getting the message message spread out there whether that's with people locally or on social media so yeah don't be afraid to, to share what you think and I mean yeah that's pretty much it I don't like to get political and talk about these things but when our freedoms on the line and the uh, freedom for future generations is at stake we need to do something so that's pretty much it let's get back to the RM and uh, hopefully bring this this uh, energy up a little bit. <laughs> Gotta be real. I know. I was gonna do two strokes and freedom, but we don't really have much freedom anymore, so. <laughs> two strokes in America it is. Check these puppies out. Looking good. All right, Cerakote, it's all done. This stuff turned on just dynamite, so let's uh, start bolting up some of these pieces. Got the motor mount here. If you guys haven't tried one of these scissor lifts, they are a back saver, man. They'll definitely make it easier for you. All right, next up we got the foot pegs. Look how sharp those things are. Looks like our foot peg holes are a little tight with that powder coat in there, so I'm gonna have to file them out. That looks kind of odd with that spring down there. Part and off the bike. Gotta go and do the front end. Refer to my old videos to figure out how these pegs go on. If you want to make sure you have a good amount of grease on these pins, we're gonna try adding a washer here just to help keep this spring in place. Add a little uh, spot for it to pivot there. She's a little tight. There we go. Some of you guys are probably wondering, why do you have the pin upside down? So I like to run it from the bottom up. So that way the cotter pins on the top side, that way when you're just getting pitted through some ruts you're not dragging this this cotter pin and it's uh not having the possibility of popping out so i always like to run them on the top side this is the most satisfying part right here as long as i don't fuck it up it's like when it's freaking tight you know freaking tight and smooth we're gonna throw some new chain adjuster bolts in the swing arm and 
sure as many of you know, these like to seize up pretty bad. Pretty much every bike I buy, these things are stuck in the swing arm just from corrosion over the years. So you definitely want to use some anti-seize grease on it. Something like this right here. Save yourself or the uh, next owner a lot of hassle down the road. All right, I think we all know what comes next. We're gonna pop these bad boys on here. That's what I've been waiting for. The close-up face shots are just gold. <laughs> See how my freaking nose hair is popping out? <laughs> I don't know guys, I'm freaking amped for this. I don't quite have all my rotors and sprockets yet, so we're just gonna get the wheels on here temporarily, but it'll uh, still be pretty cool. Can't be putting dirty wheels on a clean bike. Gotta get this one on before I take a step back and admire it. Wait, hold up guys. I gotta go take a shit. Catch a shot of me dropping some links. Unbelievable. Dude, that black and that gray, holy cow. Oops, dude. That's pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. That's about it. <laughs> I'm gonna lube up this exhaust port real quick. Hold on, go watch. We don't have any parts left on the table, so looks like we're done for the day. So with that, catch you guys in the next video. Forgot, I'm gonna torque all the engine mount bolts and suspension stuff real quick. All right, let's see if she can fend for herself. Dude, when this video drops, people are gonna forget about the whole Corona thing. They're just gonna be like, freaking RM250s, bro. Uh, all right, I gotta go get my teeth cleaned. How my teeth looking? I think Haley got them all buffed out with the, the Dremel, so. But anyways, we're gonna do some twerking on the chassis here. So what I like to call this is, just like aligning the chassis, essentially. It's um, just, finding the natural spot for the engine, the suspension, the swing arm, all that. And so we have everything just hand tight, all the motor mount bolts, swing arm pivot, shock, linkage. What we're gonna do is compress the suspension here and that'll help everything kind of find its home. And then we're gonna torque everything with the weight of the bike on the suspension. So I don't really know how much of a difference this makes, but I know it does make some difference and it just makes sense in my mind. So um, we're gonna compress the suspension, let it find its kind of natural spot there. And then we're gonna start at the swing arm bolt here. The swing arm is basically the center of the bike and that's where everything is kind of centrally located, I guess you'd say, with the, the engine and the swing arm. So we're gonna torque that bolt and then kind of work our way around the engine, bottom, over to the top and then go to the suspension. So the torque specs you can always find in like a service manual or you can pull them up on like a forum. You can do a quick Google search. Now every bike's gonna be different obviously, but for this bike it is 50 foot pounds for the swing arm bolt and the larger motor mount bolts, those are all 32 and the eight millimeter bolts are 31. All right, that's it for the engine. I'm gonna do the linkage now. Frame's in the way, so yeah, I'm just gonna have to torque that one by hand. That's about 40 right there. Another grunt will be 58. Click, uh, that's 58. Let's see the torque wrench mount works pretty good. Dude, did you hear Danger Boys signed with Suzuki? They just announced it today. Making Suzuki's great again. 
gonna be riding a RM125. What year? He's gonna be riding a 97 RM125. I'm actually building it too. Yeah, Brian Deegan just hit me up and said that they're they're wanting to go with the best bikes out there, so they they chose Suzuki's. Pretty crazy. Looks like we're gonna have to bust out the torque wrench on the arm again. Quick. You get my freaking wrench stuck in here now? Well, looks like whoever gets this bike gets a wrench with it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Last bolt. Dialed. While I'm at it, I think I'm gonna torque the triple clamps too. So these triple clamp bolts are 16. And you just wanna kinda work out them evenly. I'm breaking sweat out here, but we're all locked and loaded. And that's pretty much gonna be it for working on the RM today. But I've got a couple cool announcements for you guys, so let's head over into the office. So we've got a couple different style shirts here that I'm gonna do a giveaway on. We've got a long sleeve here. I know it's middle of summer, but got a long sleeve, got a bunch of sizes in these left, got a short sleeve in gray, two stoked, and a CR shirt. Got the CR on the back. A few sizes left in some of these, but another red or a red one here. If you guys would like to grab some of the shirts off the website, let me show you on the computer here how to do that. So what you want to do is head over to the website, primemx.com. Here at the top, you'll click on free items. And all the shirts will be on here. I only have one of them on there so far, but uh, just click on the item, select your size, add it to cart, and you must have $20 worth of product in the cart to get these things for free. So just make sure you shop around the store, maybe grab some abrasive wheels, some polishing wheels, Pro X parts for your bike, another shirt, maybe uh, some tools. Got lots of stuff on there. So yeah, head over to the website and you can grab one of these shirts. They're gonna go quick. All right, one more thing. We are gonna be doing a show out here in the Pacific Northwest. It's in Post Falls, Idaho coming up in about a week and a half, it'll be August 21st, so that's a Saturday. We're gonna have this bike out there. We're gonna have tons of product. We're gonna have the CR250 out there as well. And I just came up with this idea the other day. I'm gonna have an engine all apart, just completely disassembled and have a little uh, fun thing for you guys to do out there. You're gonna be putting the engine together on a stand. And whoever can get the engine together, we're gonna be giving away some, some free stuff. Giving away free stuff, that makes sense. Right? <laughs> we're gonna be giving away some stuff for you guys that can assemble the engine. So that'll be a lot of fun. And so if you're in the area, Spokane, Coeur d'Alene area, or even further out than that, come on out, it'll be a lot of fun. This bike, if you guys are not aware, or if you're new to the channel, when it's all finished up, we're gonna be doing a giveaway on it. And that is completely free to sign up. So if you want to sign up for it, just click the link down below in the description. And that pretty much wraps up this video. It was a lot of fun and uh, I'm really, really happy with how this thing is, is coming along. So make sure you stay tuned for the next video. We're gonna be making a lot more progress on it. And like always, if you enjoy the content, just give it a share, tell your friends, family about it, people that are into moto or share it on your social. Really all I ask of you guys is, you know, help spread the word. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Keep it prime.